the impact of film is so overwhelming. It changed my life. It changes the direction of a life. It changes the ignorance in a life. It changes a life. I grew up in a, in, in a pretty humble place that could be uh, a little dangerous at times, maybe, and dangerous in the sense that uh, not many people were motivated to get up and see the world or go to university. And I went to see this film, and Anthony Quinn and Zorba, who was full of life, and leaning over the old prostitute as she dies and telling her and stroking her face and telling her how beautiful she was and telling Ellen Bates to live life and enjoy it. And I thought, oh, man, that's the guy I want to be. I want to be that guy. And eventually, I traveled on ferries all over the Greek islands, slept on rooftops, Caught fairies in the middle of the night with gypsies who were screaming at their wives and yelling and goats and 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 stuff and uh, and Anthony Quinn's performances for me were life giving, lack of a better term. Uh, I probably still wanted to be Anthony Quinn always, and it always bothered me. Although I certainly have done oh so many things to pay the rent, but when he did something that was less than who he was, it was, uh, I didn't like it. I love Viva Zapata, I love Zorba. No, I think Donald O'Connor uh, in Singing in the Rain, when I was small and seen it in the theater and and with the, the dummy over the couch and through the wall and up and down, and I probably threw myself over everything in the living room trying to be Donald O'Connor, but I thought there was such joy in it that I thought, oh, man, do I ever want to do that. And Jimmy Durante. And Jimmy Durante with the, the soulfulness of good night, Mrs. Calabash, wherever you are, and walking out through the spotlights. Love Jimmy Durante. You know, somebody said to me one time, if it was just music, if you had one, what would it be? Probably Stefan Grappelli, the jazz violinist. But Stefan has a whole backstory too. He and Django Reinhardt, he played with a, with a three-fingered gypsy who, and Stefan was this elegant gentleman, and, and Django was rambunctious and would sometimes show up, and the two of them. I always liked, I always liked Ralph Richardson and Gielgud together. Richardson, they were dear friends. Gielgud, very, very reserved, very quiet. There's a, I think it's either Look or Life magazine, an old expose. I think it was Home they did together on Broadway. And the two of them sit there, and Gielgud is very composed and looking straight ahead. And on the side, R Richardson is tickling his, his, his ear with, you know, a feather, his tongue. I don't know. But it was, a, and, and then all of a sudden you see Gilgo just fall out laughing. Um, two very different men and, and two good friends. Uh, and, and, I, and I just, I loved them both. I mean, I, I had, didn't know them, but I certainly loved their work. No, I mean right now as we do this interview, I'm 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 doing Mike, and I mean I think the world of Mike because Mike is so flawed, and but Mike is aware of how he's lost his soul, and uh, he still has a code of honor that he lives by, and what a joy that is to play. This place saved my life. Um, for whatever reasons, I did come from the street, for lack of a better term. My sophistication was certainly limited and certainly still is. 
I'm a journeyman character actor, but I'm an actor, and I'm so proud to be an actor. Um, this is the place that gave that rambunctious young man that drew in the reins in many ways. And it, one of the directors at Brown County, um, and I think she was a graduate student, and I wish I could remember her name, but we're going back 46 years. And she gave me the note of do less. And I pretty much have taken that to heart and tried to do less my entire life. Yeah, I mean, this gave, it gave me my life. I'm going to look right into the lens. You're choosing a life in the arts. It doesn't mean it'll work out. Um, there have been times where I thought I'd have to sell my house. At 27, I had $8, child support payment due. Couldn't get home on the bus from New York to DC. Uh, I thought, what have you done with your life? So with that going on, you have to believe in yourself till the day you die. And you may be the only one. And you must never, ever lose that. Because in the end, if you leave with that, you win. You win. The fame, the fortune, it, that's the smoke and mirrors. You can only be a better artist, for me, in this case, a better actor. That's the only thing I have control over. But however maudlin it may sound, you have to be kind to yourself. You must. You must be kind to yourself and believe. And believe till the very, very end. There are going to be people who never get the chance to really show how good they are. And there is heartbreak in that. But you can't judge yourself by that, and it's certainly not who you are. I could go on. I won't. I think you got the idea. Mm -hmm.